nowhere to go. And, and the, the outcomes for those children isn't, isn't, isn't good in terms of high school completion, in terms of how many end up in various forms of, of criminality, because there's no home for them. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're literally out on their own, out on the streets uh, of the Certainly cities. this is part of the s systemic challenges mm -hmm. that yeah. fostering, that adoption uh, represents. Sure. And so our goal is, um, do, we, did, do people realize that there are around 30,000 kids who are waiting for every mm -hmm. home? Uh, there's a website, uh, Canada's Waiting Children, you can go on the website and look at the pictures of various kids who are on the website and a bit about their background and they're just looking for a place to call home. What, what's the biggest hesitation? It didn't apply to you at all. You, no, you no, planned we were, from yeah. the I do yeah. uh, to have a blended family or mm -hmm. definitely to adopt. What, what are the fears that you encounter? Oh, no, th there's there's um, some stats out there that indicate that over 50% of Canadians have considered adoption but very few take the next step. Mm. I think there's a lot of myths about adoption, um, um, myths about uh, what's involved. There's a lot of pejorative understandings of uh, adoption outcomes or the children, um, so on. And so I think there, there's a lot of bears hesitation. Um, what we're, we're working on a book project. About mm. 35 uh, families are involved with a series of essays looking at different aspects of adoption in Canada, mm -hmm. but also a whole series of testimonies about uh, yeah. positive stories of, of adoption. And, and so there are good outcomes. Uh, but what we encourage people to do is, is if you're at all interested, if you're thinking this might be a possibility, um, contact a local CAS, go to adoption.ca, mm -hmm. uh, the website of Adoption Council of Canada, and, and find out when the no next course it's called Pride, uh, Parent Resourcing Information, uh, D's de um, Development, and anyway, Education. And so it's a standard course now that you take whether you want to adopt domestically, um, whether you, it, it's, or, uh, and in domestic it's either private or through public through the CAS, uh, or internationally, you have to take this course. It's mm -hmm. about 27 hours, usually about nine evenings uh, over a nine week period, three hours each evening. And so you take the course, and that will explain everything you need to know about adoption, about fostering, about, about um, the dynamics involved. And now with in international adoption at Ballpark, mm -hmm. I understand it, it's like $20,000 mm -hmm. on average. Mm -hmm. What kind of financial uh, pressure is there well, to, if you're, to, to, to adopt domestically? Uh, domestically, if you go the private route, and this is where um, there's a, a woman um, about to give birth who wants to give her child over for, to an adoptive family mm -hmm. uh, to, to see that a uh, family that will care for them. Um, there, there's usually uh, an agency that will help facilitate the interaction, the transition. Uh, there's often lawyers' fees and so on, so there's also costs involved in that way. If mm -hmm. you work through the Children's Aid Society, if you go through the public system, uh, there's no cost whatsoever. Mm. Yeah. It's just uh, you, again, they offer the course, they will do the home studies. Uh, once you're approved, then they will look for a good match. With all these children waiting, we want to be doing everything possible to make, to cut all the red tape. I mean, apart mm -hmm. from those home studies and mm -hmm. making sure you've mm -hmm. got mm -hmm. um, trustworthy uh, homes and, and parents. The National Adoption Strategy Working Group mm -hmm. Is that your baby? Yeah, it's, that it's, some, it's something. It's something that that uh, Trace and I felt the need uh, to engage with, and what we've done is we've done it once, and we're pulling them again together probably next month sometime, uh, and that will be um, all sorts of agencies who have linked to the evangelical community who are involved one way or another in promoting adoption or fostering, mm -hmm. and and we're just trying to get in the same. Uh, same wavelength, um, different organizations have different expertise. Uh, for us, adoption and fostering for EA, the Evangelical Fellowship is just a smaller part of a broader uh, initiative we want to undertake on just the, the well-being of children in Canada. Because you, you think of the 30,000, um, in Ontario alone, um, we had the stat earlier, 9,000 kids in, in the foster system. Mm -hmm. A lot of those would be looking for a permanent home in terms of adoption. Um, uh, CS in Ontario is tracking about 300,000 children. So uh, one person um, we were talking with and said, well, those 30,000 are the lucky ones. They're the ones for whom someone took the initiative to take a phone call or that there was intervention in their lives. Whole range of other kids who are in family situations that are, 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 aren't, aren't, aren't healthy at all. 
And, and, um, and then you say, well, why are the children in adoption? What's about the parenting skills? What about issues of neglect and abuse? And, and what about the other issues that are facing the children of our country? Mm -hmm. And so this is just uh, like the tip of the iceberg. It's like peeling yeah. back the onion and saying, so, so any family, whether, if, if you're unable to adopt or to foster, there's a whole range of other things you can do to get involved in the lives of children in your community. And you can start just by talking to local schools. You can talk to the CAS. You can um, think about after-school programs, all sorts of things that can be done. Adoption Sunday resource kit. Mm. Uh, I, I just learned November is National Adoption Month. That's right. Uh, probably a likely time to see in our churches for sure uh, this emphasis happening. Well, there's no theological barrier within the evangelical community to adoption or to fostering. Um, uh, um, Ron is going to be talking later about Ephesians and us being adopted through Christ uh, as children of God. Uh, Jesus was adopted. A lot of people don't think about that, but Joseph hmm. was an adopted dad. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's in our, it's in our theology. It's in, our, it's in our, uh, our tradition. So there's no barrier there. The question is just making the connection, saying there is a need and you have a home. Are you willing to open up your home to more children, if you, if you have children, to children if you don't have children? Uh, grandparents, again, are you open, willing to open up your family and, and, uh, and receive more kids? And, and uh, so what we thought is, why not have an Adoption Sunday kit? Now, a church can do that any time during the year. Uh, November would be a logical time. It's Advent. We're thinking about the coming of Jesus. Again, Jesus was adopted, so there's a link <laughs> there. Um, but also, um, there's a lot of natural campaigns that, that are launched. If you go into a Wendy's during November, you'll see your placemats. You'll see posters about, about adoption. So that's the National Adoption Month, so that would be a good time to do it, but any time. And just have a kit so that churches have resources. Uh, have someone from the local CAS uh, come in and, and talk about adoption, about fostering have adoptive parents or foster families in your home, talk about their experiences, um, have resources, have the websites. We just want to drive people to taking that course and then through that course thinking about do they want to do international, private, uh, do they want to go the public route, whatever, but let's just mobilize Take families. Take some time to think about it. That's right. To That's investigate right. and That's to right. pray about That's it. That's right, certainly. And is this, this something you, that God would have you do? Anyone who's a parent would would say, children are part of a greater plan of God mm. for our lives. Mm -hmm. We learn so much about God's love mm -hmm. through parenting, through the love we have as we parent. Mm -hmm. That amazing surprise. Um, well, this is, I know, your experience well, yeah, too, Bruce. You know, Jesus goes further and says, unless you become like the least of these, like like these children, we fully don't understand what the kingdom of God is about. So, so we haven't really, I don't think, as, as evangelicals theologically thought a whole lot about that. But how do you do that without having children in your lives? How about engaging, seeing the world through their eyes, not just through our adult eyes? Um, and, and taking delight um, and, and the joy and the, the, uh, the innocence and the curiosity of a child and mm -hmm. explore the world. So on family day, what a better time to do that. You know, set up a structure and then let the children you know, uh, lead and, and um, uh, ex enjoy the world through their eyes. It's wonderful taking our daughter, my, my daughter took her tubing recently for the first time. And just a whole, just sheer delight. Now this is in the snow. This is on the snow. Because you That's can do right. it in the water too. You can do it in the water. No, this is the snow. This wait, is winter. Wait for and, summer for that yeah. one. But just a sheer delight. Or you're out and you're trying to point out something to her and she's off looking over here. Well, what's she looking at? What's something she curious about? Something you would about? have missed. That's right. Something you would have missed. Well, I, two great challenges for our family day. First of all, if you can, make a pact, get them to put all those electronics away, pull them off the computer and the Xbox, and uh, you might want to do an activity first. But when, maybe when you sit down to the meal, today. Talk about that empty bedroom. Talk about that emptying nest. Uh, we've had a lot of encouragement today that there's blessing that you can be a part of. Uh, riches, riches indeed. And uh, you might want to, you know, maybe once you get back to the t to technology, go to www.adoption.ca and just do a little prayerful investigating. See what God has for you. Bruce, thank you for the challenge. Very timely. Thank you. I, I love talking about the subject. Have a great Love talking about day. my daughters, too. I bet. Yeah.